Hello everyone and welcome back to Arcade Spirits. If you've missed the last part, a playlist for Arcade Spirits. If you want to play the game yourself, I have links in the description. And if you don't want to miss any parts in the future or any future Let's Plays, subscribe, turn on notifications, click that bell button. In the previous part, we had, we confessed our feelings to Teo that he returned, we went to a ballroom dance class, and now we are at the beach, enjoying the waves. Let's see what happens next. After a quick ride back to the hotel to freshen up, we found ourselves back at the beach. The full moon hung in the midnight sky, twinkling stars illuminated the sandy shore. Couldn't have asked for a more perfect night. So, here we are back on the beach, the waves are calm, and the water is still warm. By the coy tone in Teo's voice, I knew something was up, but exactly what kind of shenan shenanigans Teo was planning, I wasn't sure. Before I could inquire, Teo immediately starts shedding clothes, first his sleeveless sweatshirt. I can feel my body temperature rise exponentially as I can't help but stare at his well-defined pectoral muscles. Then his track pants. I made a fist with my hands and concentrate. <laughs> I make a fist with my hands and concentrate, trying desperately to keep my mind and body in check. I've already witnessed all the glory that is Teo in the Speedo from earlier today, but this feels so much different after everything we shared this evening. Normally I could fool myself into it just being a nice dream, but now it's suddenly very real very quickly. Let's go skinny dipping! Um... What? What? <laughs> what? Skinny dipping with Teo? Count me in. Maybe now is not the right time for this. <laughs> or a oh, wait what? I wanna go with wait what? Oh wait what? <laughs> this is the furthest thing from what I expected a night swimming to be. Maybe I'm just too innocent. I just stand there with my mouth agape. Oh, and Tony, I was only joking. But you should have seen the look on your face. Oh my god. Priceless. Teo, you can't just do that to someone. But I just did. When you said night swimming, I thought you meant swimming at night time. Like the current time of day it is. <laughs> Teo bursts up laughing. Night swimming is the definition of skinny dipping. It is not! Is it? It is! Astonished, I fell for such a silly trick. I couldn't help but laugh at Teo. I chide him in jest. You are bad. Mm -hmm. What can I say? I'm a naughty boy. <laughs> oh my god. But in all seriousness, I really did want to go swimming. Teo gives one more wink in my direction before darting towards the ocean. With a swimmer sprint, he hits the shore in no time, and takes a leaping dive right into the crashing waves. Seconds later, he emerges from the ocean, combing his hands through his salt water soaked hair. Come on in, the water's perfect! A refreshing dip in the ocean with Teo does sound like fun, but do I chance getting wet this late at night? I'll be right in, make me your- oh no, it's way too cold. <laughs> but like, you're cheesy. <laughs> this sounds fun. Make me. I like teasing Teo as much as he enjoys teasing me. It's about time he got a taste of his own medicine. I give him my best wink. I bet you can't get me in that ocean. Go ahead and try and make me. Oh, is that a challenge? Tis. I think this is one I'm about to win. The playfulness of our banter turns into Teo bounding towards me. You can't catch me. I wait till he gets closer and roll right out of his grasp. You're fast. But not fast enough. Teo darts around and catches me in a hug. I laugh happily as he picks me up. I playfully fight back and he squeezes me closer. Both of us have huge smiles on our faces. Still in his embrace, I walk us back he walks us back into the ocean. The cool water tickling my skin. What was that about not being able to get you into the ocean? 
Fine, fine, you win this time. Teo lets me down gently, and the second he has his back turned, I dunk my hands into the water, scooping up as much water as I can and splash him with all my strength. I continue the onslaught until I feel he is appropriately drenched and my arms tire. Teo laughs and smiles in return. I deserved that, didn't I? You did, and now we are even. Good. A truce is in order, then. I accept. We are now officially truced. As much as the water feels nice, it is relatively cold and I feel my skin prickle. Even in the moonlight, Teo takes notice of it. We don't want you to turn into a prune, do we? No, but I don't think I would mind being a plum if I had to be a fruit. Teo walks over to me and puts his hands on my shoulders. Once again, I find myself lost in his gaze, his gentle expression accentuated in the light of the moon. Come on, let's get you out of the ocean. Let me carry you back. <laughs> oh my god. It's only fair since I carried you in. I nod in agreement. Teo leans over, putting his arms in the crook of my, crook, crook of my knees. I gently fall into him as he picks me up. My arms find themselves wrapping around his neck, and I bury my fleshed face into his chest. Teo carries me ashore and gently places me on the sand. My toes touch the gritty sand, and once I'm stapled beneath my feet, I look back up at Teo. He brings up his hand and places it on my cheek. I nuzzle my face into his soft hand and gingerly kiss his palm. You are stunning. Smiling, he waits for my gaze to return to his before he leans over and kisses me passionately. I can still taste the ocean salt on his lips. Oh my god. <sighs> All good things must come to pass. Plus it's very cold and I feel a burning need to be dry again. To be very dry again. Soon we're toweled off, changed back into our normal, if now somewhat damp, clothes, and are enjoying the evening air rather than the evening water. Uh... I know this might seem sudden, but you mean so much to me. Oh my god! <sighs> Truth is, I feel the same way, Teo. Well then, I'm glad we're in agreement. You inspire me to be a better person. To keep working on myself and also remembering to take time to honor myself. Teo, I want you to know I will always be here for you, cheering you on. Teo wraps his arm around me and hugs me close. Thanks. Thanks for indulging me with the ballroom dancing and thank you for joining me on this lovely evening. I'll do it as many times as you want. It was totally a new experience, and I'm glad I got to share it with you. I'm going to hold you to that. Teo's arms relax, and he reaches behind himself to retrieve the small picnic basket. When did you... A gentleman never divulges his secret. His secret. <laughs> Disaster! A gentleman never divulges his secrets. Fair enough. I gladly start munching on a miniature feast of fruit. Cheese and bread. Teo joins me and pours us each a glass of wine. Let us toast to this magnificent evening. To you. I clink my glass with his. To you. We continue toasting to everything and anything. To the moon, to the stars, to the funplex. Eventually my stomach is satisfied and I'm feeling a little tipsy from all the toasts. I scoop myself up next to Teo and he lays his arm around my shoulders. I lay my head on Teo's shoulder and he hugs me close. I can feel his warmth and I smile wide. At this rate, I know I won't get much sleep, but I couldn't care less. I feel such peace being in his arms. I cuddle up closer to him and he squeezes me tight. You're wonderful. You too. There is nothing else to say. For the rest of our time on the beach, we enjoy the silence of the night, save for the crash of the waves on the shore. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and that's how Teo and I found each other. I'd call our lunchtime party the high water mark, one perfect moment in time, but I was wrong. This was it. And in the difficult weeks ahead, I'd cling to that high water mark in hopes that the wave would roll my way again. That doesn't bode well. <laughs> well it's gonna get tough for the next. 
however many chapters, levels we have. Level 5 of Arcade Spirits completed. Wow, my eyes freaked out. <laughs> so- oh my god, no, eyes, it's okay. I have to cover like where we're having the relationships and our personality right now. My eyes are not cooperating. <laughs> so far you've scored 15,300 points. You're winning friends and influencing people. Oh, and pizza fact time! Two of the th top 10 weeks of pizza consumption occur in January. More pizza is consumed during the big game week than any other week of the year. Do you want to save your game before proceeding to level 6? Uh, yeah. How long do I have? 17 minutes? Yes, I do. Save the game! Hit the lever, level 6. It is the future year 20XX, and my dream has come true. Okay, let's be honest. If you asked me two months ago if my dream involved being the event coordinator of a video arcade, I'd have just stared at you kind of funny. Even now it sounds ridiculous. But it's true. I'm here. I'm successful. I'm happy. And this is my dream. Ever since Funplex Rising, business has been booming. The Funplex is packed with players, day in, day out. Kids, teens, the college crowd, the nostalgic ones looking for old games they remember. I've run three events so far. We've started rotating our games out of storage and into play to keep things fresh. The high scoreboards are constantly shifting. In fact, things are going so well, Gavin hinted that maybe we should start looking into a second location. But this will always be home. Seeing the smiles on co-workers and gamers alike, watching my friends laugh and play in good spirits, that's working for me and it's bringing me joy in turn. I won't argue why, in fact I barely understand why. But I'm happy, and that's better than I've been in years of going with the flow. Going with the flow never brought me that much enjoyment. I'd say by this point I've soundly broken the family curse. Maybe everything doesn't have to fall apart from under me. Maybe I can just be happy. Maybe this is where I'm meant to be. Sign here, please. Huh? A bicycle messenger nudges a slim envelope my way again, trying to catch my attention. I'm snapped out of my happy little trance immediately. Oh, uh, right. No problem. Read. After jotting down my signature, he drops up the envelope and heads right out, right on out the door. No time for mo moopy or round of pinball, it seems. Delivery is to make. Seriously, I open it up. Antonio Reeves, you are cordi cordially invited. <laughs> to dine and discuss business matters at Deco's Palace with CEO Deco Nami. Meeting time will be 7 in the evening sharp. You may bring a guest of your choosing. Free Royal Value Swipe Card available for enjoyment of games prior to meeting. What? I read through it a few more times, trying to... Race? All the curly cues and swirls and swooshes. Although that doesn't clear my confusion of the whole matter. Soon Francine looks up from her knitting, curious about the letter as well. Although she seems to already have an idea of what it says. I suppose it's about that time, isn't it? Uh huh? Oh dear. Time for that fellow to make another attempt at wooing me. Double what? Rather, at wooing my beloved Funplex. Let me guess. Deco Nami of Deco's Palace sent you a fancy invitation with all sorts of fancy writing. That's accurate, yes. It's not the first time. He invited my dear Frederick and I over in 18, no, 1980X to talk about selling the Funplex, and we turned him down flat. Then in 1990X, when home game consoles were poised to take back the arcade crowd, he suggested we sell. We turned him down. Now it's 20xx and he's at it again. A gentleman would know when to quit, but he's got tin but he's got tenacity. I can't fault him for that. Why would a big time arcade operator like Deko Nami care about care that much about us? We're small time. 
but we're a threat. <laughs> uh, no offense. Come now, if anyone should be offended, it's you calling yourself small time. Antonio, dear, you've put in so much work to make my little arcade sore. I bet that's why he's knocking on our door again. We're thriving, and that's lured him back in. Like Gruyere cheese in the mousetrap. So wait, are we the cheese or the trap? My oh my! That depends on how clever you are, my dear. Right, so I'm the cheese, although I prefer to be a nice mozzarella. Same. Cheese types aside, do you want me to ignore the invite then? Oh heavens no! Con contrary to what people say about the fellow, he's very much a man of his word. I always accept his invitation, always hear him out. It's only fair and proper. I thought he was like the arcade scene's greatest evil doer. Let's be sensible. That is a bit grandiose, no? Certainly plenty of rumors of his questionable methods are abound, but that's all they are. Rumors. Politeness should be met with politeness. That's how you conduct proper business, and that's what the funplex is all about. Francine moves to raise from her seat near the ticket desk, but pauses, leaning heavily on the class countertop while looking, while looking strained. I move to help, but she waves me away. Francine, are you okay? And sits back down. Oh, don't worry about little old me. I just stood up too quickly, that's all. Just out of breath. But, Antonio, I think it's be best if you go in my stead. Well, I was the one invited anyway, so... <laughs> me? Let's be serious now. These old bones aren't as spry as they once were. And I think you'd have a good time there. Well, an interesting time at any rate. I'd look my dapperest for the villainous gentleman. Or you can count on me, I'll represent the Thumplex, or shouldn't Gavin go? He outranks me. But I was personally invited, so you can count on me! <laughs> Say no more! I'd be happy to represent the Funplex with dignity. Good, good. But remember, only offer as much respect as you are given. If he should be unclo- Uncow- Uncaw? Un- Oh my god, there's so many words in this game that I'm just like, what? <laughs> you have my permission to be- Oh my god, now we have to learn this word. Self-voicing enabled. If he should be uncouth, oh. you have my permission to be uncouth as well. There are many exploiters and users in this industry, and undoubtedly Dekonami ranks in, ranks in their number. So smile if he smiles, but use caution. So go there and turn him down. Got it. The slowness of her response is a bit concerning. I trust you to make the right decision. I trust you to make the right decision for everyone. Which is to not sell the complex, right? <laughs> I don't feel that's my call to make any more, dear. Oh, Francine. <laughs> Maybe you haven't noticed, but I, I spend most of my time at home these days. Or napping. Or napping at home. <laughs> the funplex isn't really about me. Not anymore. It's so much more than Francine's arcade funplex now. It's about you. It's about your co-workers. It's about all our regulars. You've made me realize that. And I'm thankful. This is your dream as well as mine, or your kingdom is mine to rule. But seriously. Or I wasn't trying to take over your home, Francine. This is your dream as well as mine. You're the one that started this place, Francine. You had a dream of a place where people can have fun, relax, make friends. I feel like even entertaining the idea of selling it is, well, it feels wrong. Disrespectful to you and your dream. Oh, you're a peach, dear. But times are always changing. I'm an old fuddy-duddy, stuck in her ways. Maybe the time has come to change how the funplex does things. We're almost back in the heyday of 1980X, thanks to the changes you've made. So I won't say you can't decide to sell. If it's a change you think we need, do it. Please keep an open mind. Francine sighs deeply, looking more tired than usual. 
It's only afternoon and I'm already worn out. I haven't even done anything but sit here and knit all day. Knitting takes a lot of concentration. That's not nothing. If you're feeling pooped, you could take a few days off. Go home. Get some rest. All the same, I'd rather come in for work tomorrow. Even if there's little work for me to do. I love being here. This is my true home. And yet you want me to keep an open mind about this deal? Like I've told you, life can be a difficult series of trade-offs. What I want and what it should be are often different things. I'm relying on you to do right by everyone I love. If selling is in their best interest to keep this dream going, so be it. No matter what you decide. <laughs> I'm proud of you. I knew there was something special about you when I hired you to replace my grandson. You are the brightest spirit at the Funplex. And while we may not be blood, I'm happy to oh. consider you part of my family. <gasps> I'm gonna cry. You're the grandma I never had, Francine, or Francine, you have my sincerest thanks, or does that mean I can part with the core mom, or I'll defend the funplex of my life, or won't your family object to that? You're the grandma I never had, Francine. That probably will turn back around at me, I don't know. You're the grandma I never had, Francine. I never knew my grandparents, either of them. They died when I was really young. I feel like you filled that role. You've become the grandmother I never knew, Miss Francine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome home, Antonio. You'll always be welcome here. <gasps> I'm gonna cry. With another, with another deep sigh, Francine eases herself out of her chair. Now, I think I'll take your suggestion and head on home. Well, for today, anyway. I'll be bright and I'll be here bright and early in the morning to hear how things went with Mr. Nami. I know you'll make the right decision. Good night, Antonio. Be well. Make the right decision. Okay. Nope, still not keen on selling out my dream, or I'll try to leave my options open and hear him out. Or Arcade can't stagnate. Maybe change is inevitable. I'll leave my options open and hear him out. This is weird. Seriously weird. All this work, all this effort, finally finding my dream, as strange as that sounds, and I need to consider dumping it all? But, well, maybe it's not selling out. I actually haven't heard Deku Nami's proposal yet, and if we somehow could partner with him in our own terms, that might be what we need to push the Funplex over the top and place a rival. We'd be the sister boutique to his department store. Still, I'm not willing to say one way or another. Not yet. We'll see. Now, who do I want to take as my plus one? My soul says Gavin. But my heart says someone beep, else. Beep beep, Antonio. Okay. Bet you want to come as my date? I'm your girl Friday, but I'm afraid you're not my type. My type being USB compatible, of course. <laughs> I sensed you were in a state of deep ponderance and wanted to help. You're thinking of who to take to the meeting? Yeah, I mean, Teo is an obvious choice. I'm sure he'd have some opinions at Deco Palace. Deco's Palace. True, as part of the Funplex family, Teo would be a good pick. But this is a business meeting. You may want to consider widening your options. Teo will support your decision either way. It's clear he trusts you. True, okay then. Gavin, he does business in a business-like way. Look, me and Gavin will probably balance ourselves out because he'll look at it as a business and I'll be the heart. <laughs> but also Teo, because I actually want to do all the scenes with Teo. <laughs> Naomi, she can assess the quality of their games. Ashley, she's got a good eye for local culture. Queen Bee, she knows the gaming gamer scene. Percy, he knows business and gaming in equal amounts. Or Teo, he understands arcade social communities. <sighs> I don't know. You know what? I'm gonna leave this for next time. Thank you everyone for joining me. Hope you liked that continued date with Teo. Uh, if you don't want to miss the next part, subscribe, turn on notifications, click that bell button. If you liked what you've seen, like! If you want to play the game yourself, I have the links in the description.
Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. And thank you to this month's patrons. If you're interested in becoming a patron, I have a link in the description. Hopefully, I'll see you there.